Hello from Jacob's Pillow. I'm Norton Owen, and it's my pleasure to be here live with you today to introduce this visit with Judith Jamison. Not only is this one of my favorite pillow talks, but also her birthday is coming up in a few days, and we thought this would be a great way to celebrate. So we'll be here for about uh, 30 minutes or so, um, and I will come back uh, in between segments to set up what's next, and then I'll be online live with you for a few minutes afterwards to um, respond to your comments and take any questions. So first up is about a 17-minute segment, uh, which explores Ms. Jamison's early life in Philadelphia, her training, and really all of this first segment uh, comes before she became a famous Ailey icon. So uh, let's enjoy this together. My parents put me in dancing school when I was six years old because I think I was born with a 36 inch inseam. I have, you know, I mean, my, <laughs> my legs were so long, my arms were so long. And um, I also was um, knock kneed and pigeon toed. And I had corrective shoes, right? So um, mother and dad put me in the Judamar School of Dance and that was Marion Suget's school. Marion Suget had red hair, green eyes and white skin. She was a black woman and she was determined to have African-American children be able to study ballet in Philadelphia. It was very difficult. Mm. But I tell you, because I had her training, which included ballet, 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 because by the time I was 10, I was studying with Tudor, with Antony Tudor. I was a little 10-year-old protege that was studying with, somebody had to remind me of That's that. That's extraordinary. You know what I'm so Chiquetti, I knew inside out and backwards, you know, and I learned tap, thank goodness, because I ended up on Broadway with Gregory mm. Hines, <laughs> tapping. I learned Dunham technique, which she is the mother of us all, Miss Dunham. I learned, oh gosh, what acrobatics and found out I had no back. <laughs> You know, that's a, that's a terrible thing to find out. I mean, you, you know, you're doing cambre and you realize, I can't cambre. You know what cambre <laughs> is? You know, if I bent back and, you know, bent back and down. But I can hinge like crazy. <laughs> I can do a hinge. A hinge is different. You know, that means you're going back like this, right, like that. So I could do that. I couldn't arch. I couldn't arch very well. So I learned all of these things mm -hmm. under her roof, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. everything, and, and also tea dances. Mm -hmm. You know, she used to have tea dances on Saturday, and we had to wear our skirts, which I looked horrible in, <laughs> the skirts, because I had high waist, long legs, no, no waist, you know, and it was the era of the cinch belts and those poodle things on the <laughs> thing, and it was horrible, it was horrible. But we had tea dances, you had to dance this far apart, and we had to wear gloves. Wow. And the gentleman, you know, I mean, it was wonderful, wonderful way of growing up besides learning how to play the piano from my father. Mm -hmm. The school gave us violins so that we could learn. My brother played the clarinet, blah, 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 blah. And I learned something from the book that I hadn't realized, which was that, um, that Miss Marion's teacher was Essie Marie Dorsey, Dorsey yes. who had studied with Denishawn. Yes. So... <laughs> I know, uh, it's connected, it's so Yeah, connected. it's all connected. Absolutely. So the school that Ted, Sean, and Ruth St. Dennis founded, in essence, was the, um, the school of your teacher's teacher. Yes, for that's, the ballet, yeah. absolutely. That's yeah, amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. And you also talked about having a shrine of photographs on your bedroom wall. Now, Freddie tell us about Franklin that. was one of them, Janine Laveau was another one, and uh, Carmen de la Vallade. <laughs> was the other one. But I, I mean, there were those old postcards that I don't know if you've ever seen them before, but everybody's like, <laughs> 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 oh, I mean, they look absolutely divine. They're, you know, who, who knew of all the postcards I had up there if all of them could dance, but they sure knew how to take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, Tamara Tamanova was up yeah. there. Um, oh, Tannekill. Yeah. Um, uh, just everybody was on that wall as I was growing up. Yeah. But my, my connection with Carmen de Lavalade was Donald McHale's choreography in a 
a uh, program that I think it would come on CBS, and it was Giancarlo Manati's Amal and the Night Visitors. Mm. And Carmen used to dance in that. And you production. saw this on television every as a child. Christmas yeah. time. I would yeah. see that. You know, when we got the television, that yeah. wasn't until a little, uh -huh. little late. You know, but still, I'm getting. You know, to see your image in front of you on television, mm -hmm. to see, oh, my goodness, oh, there's a woman of color in front of me on s doing mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. You know, it opens your eyes mm -hmm. to. The, the possibilities, mm -hmm. and Marion had already done that. Yeah. And of course, my parents had given me the opportunity to see everything. There was the Philadelphia Art Museum, the Rodin Museum, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't just Rocky standing up there going like yeah. this, you know. <laughs> there were wonderful, wonderful things happening in Philadelphia. My church, Mother Bethel AME Church, my goodness, I was born and raised in that church. I'm now a member of Abyssinian Baptist Church, but, you know, mm -hmm. I grew up in that church. But those resources, I mean, I think it's, it's um, appropriate to mention that Miss Marion had to fight pretty hard to make sure that she had a school. Oh, that, yes. That, yeah, that because uh, you talked about her ha being evicted and every time. And having to move. We every moved time. about six times in, in maybe ten years because, you know, this woman, she'd get a foot in the door, everybody thought everything was all right, and then all these little black ballerinas would come in back behind her. And that, that door would slam shut so quickly. That, and, but she was the first African-American woman to rent space in downtown Philadelphia. And she was absolutely committed to that, so yes. much so that she kept going back and, absolutely. and making sure. And also farming us out. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I studied with some incredible teachers uh, that maybe you, um, do you remember Jelensic? Frano Jelensic, I think that was his name. Or um, there was a guy named Jamie Jameson who was an incredible, uh, uh, um, like no mm -mm. I Irish Irish. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing the castanets and trying to do like this at the same time, and I should have just put my arms down and gone like this, <laughs> like this. But he was a champion okay. Scottish Highlander. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, thank uh -huh. you. And an incredible ballet teacher, and I studied with him. A guy, also a, a guy named Yuri Gottschalk, and of course, my first gig in New York was well, uh, with American Ballet Theater. Yeah, I so, want to get to that, but just a, before we um, get there, I want to ask you about your debut. Was as Mirta in Giselle at the age of fifteen? Yes. In yeah, in yeah, Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. So you were still <laughs> that picture's in the book. Yeah, too, it right? is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for recreating right? it for us. Yeah, yeah, but I was so serious, <laughs> you know. I was saying, when I was 14, I was teaching nine-year-olds. Uh -huh. I was teaching ballet to nine-year-olds, right? That's fantastic. And that's wow. when I found out what a ferocious teacher I was. I'm, I'm the, you know, you can vouch for that, right? You do that. <laughs> <laughs> they have a student over there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm surprised you're sitting. <laughs> 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 but in, in any event, uh, I, I but was then, a real taskmaster. Yeah, I still am. So then, so tell us, uh, Demille taught a guest class. Yeah, in I was going to the Philadelphia Dance Academy, which is now the University of the Arts, and there was the Philadelphia Music Academy and the Dance Academy, and we ran back and forth between both mm -hmm. places. So one evening, she was teaching a master class. I was exhausted. I had been taking classes all day long. I'm not interested. Not interested. Me not interested in Agnes DeMille, right? Loving her, her work, loving everything she was doing. And uh, she came. I said, uh, somebody dragged me to the class. She said, come on, you have to take this one. I took the class, and at the end of the class, she said, would you like to come and uh, be a guest artist with a ballet that I'm reviving with ballet theater with Carmen de Lavalade as the lead? <laughs> and, and you I said, let said, me think it over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, easiest answer in the world, sure. Yeah. And I still didn't realize the, the yeah. monumentalness of the of that experience. Well, it's interesting for me too to read about this uh, and and hear Demille saying that this master class that she taught, most of the people in the class were fairly ordinary, and then she said, and this one girl was astonishing. <laughs> So clearly, she saw something she there. She did. I yeah. don't know what. Because it, what was wonderful, it was because we were doing uh, walk, skip, 
jump. I mean, the simplest things in the world, nothing, nothing, but those are some of the most important things that a dancer can do. Walk, skip, run, stand still. Mm. You know? Very important. If you can't do those, then, you know, I don't care if you can do, you know, your 32 fuetes. You know what I'm saying? Or if you can do a lateral until a lateral position where you just tilt all the way over, lateral T position, and hold it in releve and do all kinds of roll the hand. Do I don't care whether you do all that. If you don't know how to put weight to stillness, if you don't know how to put energy in, in, in clear space when you run, if you don't know how to make curves out of, sh out of, out of the sky, out of what we don't mm. see, you create. You know, it's such a treasure to be a dancer, mm. such a treasure. And you're born that way, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I might not be able to still, you know, carry the umbrella and do this, which I know <laughs> y'all enjoy seeing me do this. <laughs> I know that. I might not be able to do that the way I did, but it's always in me, and it's always in me to pass to along, pass along to each generation what I know. But what a gift to be able to do whatever you do, mm -hmm. you know, and do it excellently, which is what we're going to do tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> He's for sure. Well, so you go to New York, and you're suddenly with uh, guesting with American Ballet Both Theater. Yes, yes. That's w that's quite a way to hit New York as a 22-year-old. Yes, yeah. yes. I think I was 22. It, you know, it fluctuates. Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> 21 and a half. 20, yes, it was. And, uh, and because Carmen de Lavalade and Jeffrey Holder took me under their their wings, mm -hmm. and uh, um, they, I lived in their house, mm -hmm. you know, and I, they would because Carmen was the star. It was called the Four Marys. And Carmen was the fourth Mary, and <laughs> she knew all the stars. So I walked into, at, at one moment, uh, every, everybody you can think of from that era, Johnny Kreitza and uh, Tony. Tony, come on, help me out here. Who's the dancer here? Tony, Tony who? Tony Lander. Tony Lander, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just you just and name them, and they, they had but just I was hanging out with yeah, them. Right, Anton Dolan. Yeah, I was. Well, I went to a party, and he was sitting on the floor talking. Just you know how he was. <laughs> he was like very, you know, he was very like this, right? He was very open. All, I was socializing with all these people because I knew because Carmen. Of Carmen. You know, the quarter ballet people used to look at me with venom in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had sort of leapfrogged oh right over them oh, in wow. coming in, right? You came into yes. this soloist And I position. would go up to the quarter ballet dressing room, and I was going like this, and you could feel it with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> oh. Because then they knew I would go out and then party with, you know, uh -huh. the stars. Uh-huh. You know, so, Yeah. <laughs> But that didn't, it wasn't necessarily an unbroken ascendancy from that point onward, no, was it? No, yeah. because that ballet was specifically about a southern couple with four slaves, and the master fell in love with that gorgeous slave, and that just made a mess of a dramatic ballet. It was, it was the four Marys. As I say, she was the fourth Mary. But after I my, took my first plane ride to Chicago on a Pan Am Clipper, <laughs> Four propellers, yeah, okay. At my first opera house, that was the first time I danced. Mm -hmm. uh, I danced the state theater, and then I danced in the opera. After that, the gig was up. That was it. There were no black people running around in ballet theater. That was it. That yeah. was it. So I went to the log flume ride at the Texas Pavilion at the World's Fair, and I pushed buttons, you know, and changed levels of water so you would come out a little bit wetter when I was operating. <laughs> And I worked with 400 Texans and Floridians, students. Uh -huh. it, was, it was a wonderful experience. And then after that, you know that I went to an audition because a wonderful woman who was the pianist for American Ballet Theater named Martha Johnson sent me to an audition that Donald McHale was giving for Harry <laughs> Belafonte. It was a Harry Belafonte special about Roaring Twenties. There was a story so similar with the men dancers. You all were fabulous the other day. Did you all <laughs> see them? Did you see the men, the, the, the horse's mouth? Oh, my gosh. 
But I have, it, there's a similar story where mm. somebody turned up in a, in a completely different outfit. Who is that? They were in a complete, I showed up with, with uh, leg warmers, <laughs> right, that I had made myself, very, very nice. They happened to be pale green. And pink ballet slippers, the tights, a little skirt, and my leotard. And, and you had been operating the log flume log ride, the ride rather and than And I had been, not take, yeah. taken class in three months. Yeah. Um, still no excuse, I was terrible at the audition. <laughs> but they, people showed up with lashes out to here, <laughs> wigs, stilettos, you know, the whole nine yards, you know? Yeah. And I'm going like, Tanju at the bar, and, and people are bumping and doing all kinds of stuff, and I'm going like, okay, what is this? And a wonderful woman who turned into an actor, Paula, Paula, I'll think of her name. Anyway, Kelly? Paula, Paula Kelly, thank uh -huh. you. Paula Kelly was demonstrating. Have you ever seen Paula Kelly dance? This woman, oh my goodness, she's a fantastic dancer, incredible dancer. She was demonstrating. So I was so fascinated by the movement she was doing, I didn't learn a thing. I didn't get it. I didn't understand what step one, two, hold, three, four, five, six. I'm used to ballet terminology. So I want you to say glissade to me, assemblée, entrechat, royale, parasha, arabesque, passé, contretemps. You know, I want, I want to hear that vocabulary. No, this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and nine, ten and mm, 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 <laughs> and I'm in that groove, but I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so I failed miserably. And you said that Donnie kept you in, though. Donnie was such a gentleman to me because he kept me in the the audition to the last cut. For all I know, he had been saying thank you very much, but I didn't understand thank you very much <laughs> to go. So I was still You're welcome. <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, anyway, down to it. He kept me to the last cut. I went running out of the, not running, but I was, you know, being the drama queen that I am, I went out up these steps, and there was a man sitting on the side of the steps. And I went across the street to call my mom in Philadelphia on a payphone. And I called her and got my little change out and I said, Mo, you know, boo hoo boo hoo. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I have to stay here. Blah, 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 blah. And three days, it was either two days or three days later, I get a call saying, um, My name's Alvin Ailey. Would you like to join my company? And he was the man who was sitting That's there the on the way. That's the man that was sitting yeah. on the steps. You know, everything, the universe is in order. You know, yeah. Every, it's all right. It's all right. We're supposed to be where we're supposed to be. You know? Yeah. Well, we're supposed to be where we're supposed to be. I just love that, and and particularly a lesson for today. Um, I realized that I forgot to say earlier that this pillow talk was filmed in 2012. Um, Judith Jamison was here at that time teaching in the school at Jacob's Pillow. Uh, but that was certainly not her first time here. In fact, um, over my left shoulder, you'll see a photograph of her first time at the Pillow. She was um, performing uh, in uh, Icarus by Lucas Hoving. Um, but then she would return many times after that, uh, most notably uh, starting in the 1980s, uh, she came to teach. Uh, this was during the time I was running the school, starting in 1984 and um, for several summers in the Horton workshop, which was run by James Truitt, who was a mentor to her, as, as uh, you'll hear more about actually in this next segment. Um, so uh, this next segment that we'll see um, starts out with her talking about uh, being in the apartment that Alvin Ailey and James Truett shared um, when she was first in the company. Um, and uh, there's also a wonderful moment. It was a very hot day, which I uh, recall. And uh, at one point she takes the fan um, and starts to fan herself, which is quite reminiscent of Revelations in a wonderful way. Uh, there's also in this upcoming segment, uh, she addresses someone in the first row. Uh, she's talking about Alicia Graf Mack, who is now the head of the dance division at the Juilliard School. 
but she says, uh, she was one of your babies. And she's talking to Arthur Mitchell, who was seated in the first row. Mr. Mitchell was here performing in From the Horse's Mouth that same week uh, that Judith Jamison was here, quite a week. So uh, this segment is about five and a half minutes and talks about her early work with the Ailey Company. 66th Street, there's now something there. There used to be an apartment, Brownstones, there. Mm -hmm between uh, Columbus Avenue and Central Park West, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where his little apartment was. And Jimmy Truitt was living there too, James Truitt, who's also been to the pillow, and mm -hmm. of course, Mr. Ailey, of course. And I stayed on their couch for a little bit, you know, because I was in between houses again. And I watched Alvin one night um, at his desk with papers all over it, uh, calling people up, trying to get us bookings. And there were only, when I joined the company, there were 10 of us. Mm -hmm. And he was calling to try to get bookings. And then when we would perform, it would be like six weeks of one night stands and stop. And then six weeks of one night or four weeks of one night stands and then stop. And we'd get these little envelopes. And in the envelopes would either be money with like $5 or $25 or thank you very much. And Which was just fine. It was fine. You know, when we opened mm -hmm. up, we figured out what to do, you know. But we loved Alvin, and we still do, mm -hmm. you know. The, you traveled on a bus at that time, right? Oh, you yeah. toured. These were, these were bus tours of one-night stands. Which was much better than the generation before me. Alvin's generation traveled in station wagons. Mm -hmm. So it went from the station wagons to the bus to the plane, mm -hmm. and still to this day, Ailey, at, in some states, does bus. Mm. You know, so you, you, know, you get around, you bring, the whole idea is to bring dance to people. Mm -hmm. So you, you take it wherever you can take it, however mm. you can take it, and thank God we've got two companies. You mm -hmm. know, we got Ailey, Ailey too. Mm -hmm. So they go places where we can't go. But it's, Alvin's mantra was always about Dance came from the people and needs to be delivered back to them. Mm -hmm. So we needed to deliver, and that's what we did. I Still think do. it's extraordinary th seeing the Ailey Company today, which of course is so much a testament to, uh, yes, please, to what you have uh, accomplished there, and reading your description of what it was like in the time that you were performing, and you said that the dancers of your day were not as technically proficient as today's Different, dancers. Yeah, Different. differently mm -hmm. proficient. Mm -hmm. Differently proficient because mm. well, here it comes. Yes, that breeze. Here it comes. Yeah, um, I, I'd say in the book, you know, I was very young when I wrote mm -hmm. that book, but in the book, um, wh what I really mean mm -hmm. to say is it's differently mm -hmm. uh, proficient that uh, now in Revelations, for instance, because of a marvelous woman named uh, Consuelo Atlas, um, there's a beautiful T position where the, in Fix Me Jesus, where the woman puts her leg up and the guy's holding her arm and she just goes back, 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 and then she relevates and comes up. That was like that in the it, beginning. You didn't do it that it way. Was, no, yeah. I saw Minnie Marshall do it uh -huh. with Jimmy Truitt. Jimmy Truitt was my first dance partner mm -hmm. in, in, oh my goodness, I'm so, and so many memories from Jacob's Law. But we just went to a, a T position. That was it, you know? T position meant my front leg is here and my back is here. And the whole thing went like this, right? Then later, everything went that way and that leg was all the way up there, <laughs> you know? So dancers today, the facility that they have, mm. oh my goodness. The, I'm, I'm thinking of one of your babies who is now one of our babies. She belongs to the world, Alicia Graf Mack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. you see this woman dance? Yeah. One of Arthur's babies. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, incredible mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about y'all guys. Y'all, right <laughs> over there, I'm talking about you. So it's different. So the revelations that was done back in the day looks different than the revelations that's done date, but it's the same vocabulary. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same dance. Mm. It's just, you know, there are not two Lana Turners. Mm -hmm. Okay, you get my drift? You know who Lana Turner is? <laughs> Do you know she, You know, I mentioned Betty Davis this afternoon, and I had some blank faces up there. <laughs> you know? 
Well, but, Betty, Betty Davis was on your wall of uh, icons yes, too. Yes, Betty, yeah. all those divas. Mm -hmm. Betty Davis, uh, uh, what's, what's her face? Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford, mm -hmm. uh, Olivia de Havilland, mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. of those people that were making those divine films that you can see on TCM. <laughs> you know, still, you know, I was looking at the Dinah Shore show the other day. I'm like, what is this? I don't get this in New York. I grew up on that stuff. Dinah Shore, Chevy show, mm -hmm. and Jack Benny, and mm -hmm. those, those people influenced mm -hmm. me, you know? I mean, yeah. I was watching them, and I was, you know, doing, what can I say? What we, you know, we are so... How wonderful it is that we can all sit with each other. I, mm. I, you know, I appreciate it. The older I get, the more I appreciate what's around me. And I know I'm looking in faces that are going, like, yeah, you just figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But it's so true. Isn't it true? Yeah. I'm right, right? You're right. I'm right. You just mm -hmm. start appreciating and wanting to pass on also, mm -hmm. also what you have. Wow. Well, we are blessed. And... It's wonderful to be reminded that you appreciate what you have and you pass it on. So uh, these are wonderful messages. Thank you. Uh, this last segment that I want to share with you is about seven minutes. Uh, it starts with uh, her talking about working with Mikhail Baryshnikov. Um, and some other ballet icons, and then she goes on to talk about what makes a dancer, um, and then finally segues into uh, her Broadway starring role with Gregory Hines in Sophisticated Ladies. So let's finish up. Give Misha credit um, because he, I mean, you know, I, I went on tour with him. Gelsey and I went on tour with him in Vienna at one point. It was Misha and friends. And this, I watched him from the side, from stage left, and he was doing Corsair, and I wanted to run away. There was so much power and so much focus and, mm. and so much otherworldly-likeness mm. to him when he performed, mm. you know? It, Alvin was the same way, mm -hmm. you, you know, just... It, it, the floor, you know, they rose from the floor. They were off the floor, mm. you know what I'm saying? On the floor, but off the floor. Mm. Um, and Misha had a great sense of humor. Um, I give him credit for being classically trained and then trying to step into the lateral world, mm -hmm. trying to step into uh, Dunham and, and Lil Graham here, and a little, you know, and it, it was Pas de Duke. That was the name of, of the mm -hmm. piece. And with Ellington, that music. was of mm -hmm. Ellington. Mm -hmm. There was a mm -hmm. total marriage between Ailey and Ellington. But that was, can you imagine? Uh, that's why I say, when dancers, when you are truly a dancer, you can do anything. You can do anything. You can move any way, you know? And I give him credit for having the cojones to go out there and do it. Mm -hmm. Just come out there and be on stage with me. <laughs> oh, giant-sized Judith <laughs> Jamison? He rose to the occasion. Mm -hmm. I cannot say enough for him. And mm -hmm. I also cannot say enough about also Sasha Goodenough, who mm -hmm. I also worked with, mm -hmm. and working um, the river on American Ballet Theater with Eric Brune mm. and Natasha. So you were assisting I Alvin Ailey uh, when he was creating the river, the river for yes. ABT yeah, yeah. with with an original score by Duke, Duke Ellington. Ellington. Yeah, yeah. Cynthia yeah. Gregory, mm -hmm. you know, The Lake, I was teaching her, and mm -hmm. Sally Wilson was in that. I mean, it goes on and on and on, the wonderful people that uh, Mr. Ailey was able to connect with and make crossovers with them, you know, mm -hmm. which just proves that a whole idea. Cap D, you're mm -hmm. a dancer, okay? Mm -hmm. But you are multi layered. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do many things. One of them is being smart. I haven't run into a dumb dancer yet mm -hmm. that knows how to dance, right? Because you've got to use all these faculties in order to get all mm -hmm. this to move. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have heart and soul. Well, you proved this then when you made a move from the Ailey Company to Sophisticated Ladies oh, on sure. Broadway. Oh, my that God. Tell you us know, about that. Well, they paid well. <laughs> <laughs> That was some, that's when I got that house in Connecticut. You know. <laughs> but I'm telling you, they did. I mean, you know, you don't, not for profit, you don't see 
<laughs> stuff like that. Unless you've got an, an agent named Paul Zillard, who I do, and uh, who's going to be 100 years old in two months. He was the agent for Ailey for 35 years, and he was also my agent. So he had, I was doing cry all over the place. I was in between tutus constantly. <laughs> there would all of a sudden be a huge gala somewhere, and there would be, um, you know, uh, uh, something from Bayadere, and there'd be, you know, um, um, Don Quixote, and, da -da -da, and people were all out there in the tutus. And then all of a sudden, Allegra Kent and Eddie would do Fawn. Afternoon of Fawn. I mm -hmm. met her lying on stage with her legs in a split going like this. <laughs> she was sleeping. She was in the wings, <laughs> asleep, <laughs> like this. I also, my, the very first, I'll get back to yeah, the subject, but the very good. first gala I did, Jimmy Trudeau and I did Fix Me Jesus, and Melissa Hayden and Jacques were doing Stars and Stripe Pottery. You know the one with, where you, they promenade with the, and, and when she turned up stage, this one, you know, yeah. you have to have a sense of humor for this. She turned up stage, this one. <laughs> like this, love Melissa. I love, I love Melissa. Hey, she, she was, you know. But uh, those, so those, I was stuck into those galas. And so you were then, doing cry. And I was doing cry, yeah. right? And and it was to tape music. So it was really a law. It was a giant step for for modern dance, you know, yeah. for concert modern dance. But back to the subject, I didn't realize that Broadway. When I was doing Broadway, first of all, <clears throat> I stopped doing anything corrupt. I was doing. And I won't tell you what corruption I was into. <laughs> but anything, uh, drinking, smoking, anything like that, nothing, nothing. Because I was on stage with Phyllis Hyman. I don't know if you ever, it, look it up, go pull her stuff up online, y'all. Okay? <laughs> because she was an extraordinary artist. Mm. Gregory Hines, you know, I was, you know, starring, name above the title, all that. It's my first gig on Broadway, right? Mm -hmm. First and last. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> And, you never should say that, though. But, um, you know, I never should say that only because Carmen de Lavalade, who is 81 years old, is on Broadway now doing A Streetcar Named Desire. Yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So never say never. What is it? D. Chabet, Chabet. Anyway, <laughs> so, I'm on the stage. You are not doing the same thing every night. I don't care if, you, if it's the same choreography, it's not the same thing. The air is different, the audience is different, it smells different. Yeah. You know, uh, it took me a while to get that on stage. What brought it home was one day I came out for a matinee and, oh God meant for this to happen because my heel got caught in my skirt. And it was a very fancy costume. I looked sharp when I came out on stage. And wasn't I looking, kissing you, the floor. Yeah. I kissed the floor. I fell right on the floor in my first oh. entrance. Oh, wow. My first entrance. And Gregory is standing there like this. Music is a woman, da 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 And the, the woman that was music <laughs> was flat out on the floor. And as only Gregory could do, he looked at it and he said, are you all right? <laughs> he didn't help me up, nothing. He just said, and there was no way I could clean it up. But that's when it came home to me. This is not, you don't take this for granted. It's not the same thing every night. Yeah. It's not the same show every night. It's same steps, blah, 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 blah. But you have to come like this to it every time. It's a new experience because that audience hasn't seen you. Uh -huh. And you haven't seen you that day. Yeah. So it's about, about a meeting, mm -hmm. you know, of spirit and mm -hmm. mind and body and making it work. So I learned that lesson and then had a blast of a time with the Duke Ellington Orchestra playing behind mm. us for two years. Well, there's another message there, the power of live performance, which we know all too well is precious. Uh, so I feel really lucky to be here with you today to look back on this pillow talk. Um, but of course, we can't leave it there. I want to share some, uh, some of Judith Jamison dancing with you. And so uh, we have another little segment uh, to share. This is something that lives on Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive. Uh, but just to set it up, this is 1988. Um, and it's the Jamison Project, which was a company that she began here at The Pillow, actually. Um, and uh, this was um, short-lived, but not because it was an unsuccessful venture. It was short-lived because 
um, while uh, the, the company was in its first season was when Alvin Ailey um, came to Judith Jamison and said, I want you to take over the company. Um, and so it came to an end, and yet that was another beginning in a very big way. Uh, but here, uh, what we'll see is uh, a segment that was, uh, that was filmed in the summer studio here at The Pillow. It was a very informal showing of the Jamison Project, the program that they were about to present at the Joyce Theater in New York. Um, and it included a, uh, in, in rehearsal clothes where she's wearing uh, polka dot socks, which I love. Uh, it's a solo that was made for her by Garth Fagan. Um, and I believe that this may be the only uh, recording that there is of this solo. It's, it was a piece called Scene, Scene. That's S-C-E-N-E-S-E-E-N. Um, and uh, again, you can see it on Dance Interactive, but we'll look at it here. Um, I invite you to think about something that she says to the, to the audience in the studio just before uh, doing this showing. She talks about the stillness that Garth Fagan um, emphasized and how he wanted her to focus on those moments of stillness. So you see actually some quite um, understated moments in this dance, uh, and yet they are all the more powerful as well. So let's enjoy Judith Jamison in Scene Scene. that, we conclude our visit with Judith Jamison today. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon to share some of this Pillow Talk from 2012 and also this dance segment from 1988. Um, and I want to invite you to join us again whenever you can. Uh, we will be sharing more things every week online. Uh, the easiest way to find those is to go to our website, jacobspillow.org. Look for the virtual pillow tab in the upper right corner of your computer screen, and there you'll find aggregated all of what we have been sharing, as well as links to uh, Jacob's Pillow Dance Interactive, where there is untold riches for you to explore. Also on the jacobspillow.org site, look for the support tab because we do um, need your help. This is a, a very challenging time for Jacob's Pillow. We are doing our best to keep in touch with you online, uh, but we do need your support and hope that you'll uh, help us in some way. 
as soon as I can get back to my computer, um, I will engage in the live chat on this YouTube live event. Uh, and I also wanted to say that while we're chatting, we'll be sharing some additional still images made by our festival photographer, Christopher Duggan, and his intern from 2012, Taylor Crichton. And so enjoy those images and please come again. Thank you.